Welcome back. Today we're talking about one of the vulnerable populations that's really struggling during the COVID-19 crisis. Joining me now is Corey Chun. He is the Government Relations Director for the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Good to see you, Corey. Thanks for having me. So back in uh, March on the 25th, we sent out a survey to cancer patients in our networks across the country just to see what kind of impacts they're facing with COVID-19 because we, we recognize that with the pandemic and all the different changes to the healthcare delivery system and just you know everyday life in general, our cancer, cancer patients and survivors are gonna probably face a tougher time, but we just didn't know exactly what those issues would look like or what those challenges would look like. So that's why we sent it out. And we just published the report uh, this week and so there are some things that we sort of anticipated, like there were a lot of changes, um, reported changes to just the way cancer patients or either and survivors are either getting treatments or getting follow-up testing. Uh, the biggest issue we saw were just delays. There's just a lot of fear now around the whole you know, health system because you don't wanna overtax a structure that's already kind of focused on this virus. What are some of the concerns you're hearing on the ground from people that are trying to get these tests, their regular visits and their medicines and their chemo? So one of the biggest concerns is that for a lot of cancer patients who are going to active treatment, they are immunosuppressed, which puts them in the category of very high risk for COVID-19. And no, they're not immune to what's been going on. They're just seeing in the media where there's been a lot of outbreaks at hospitals and healthcare facilities. And so there's a big concern for them on how to weigh that risk. You know, they're thinking, do I risk going in, possibly catching COVID-19 in one of these settings or delaying treatment, which could possibly lead to you know, a diagnosis, a later diagnosis which is something who's, anyone who's ever had cancer, you know, that's very frightening, right? Because we all know that early detection leads to the best outcomes when it comes to cancer. In Hawaii, give us some of the statistics or the numbers. How many people really are affected and um, what kind of resources are available out there for them here? So we, we do know that every year, there's between four to 5,000 people who are diagnosed with cancer, and we lose about 2,000 of those to the disease. But, I mean, and with cancer treatment, it's so specific. So I've had discussions with many folks in the cancer community, and you know, just trying to give general guidance is really hard because it's really a decision between the patient and their treating physician. So I would encourage any cancer patient who has a concern to reach out to their, uh, either their oncologist or their treating physician just to have that discussion because a lot of times they are making themselves available, maybe not through phone, but um, you know, through Zoom or Skype or other, other means or even through, and even if their offices are closed, I know a lot of physicians are still making themselves available. And I know so many people are out of work. Are you seeing that uh, these particular patients, this population are losing health benefits because they have lost their jobs? When it comes to sheltering in place, you've had some folks uh, who volunteer with us reach out and, and ask how do they isolate themselves within their own home? Um, from family members. And right now there's not really a great uh, answer for that. It's just a matter of trying to separate someone into a separate room, but I don't think there's a, you come up with a solution as to how to isolate someone who, ha who is immunosuppressed when there's a, a lot of folks living in the same household. Mm -hmm. A lot of challenges, and I know I've talked to a few people who've also lost their caregivers, you know, because of the fear of, you know, some contamination or infection, the caregivers can no longer help them with everyday tasks like cleaning and cooking and getting groceries. Is there anything that can be done on that front? Because that's another aspect that, you know, that's challenging for them. So we're looking at all types of issues uh, 
you know, we believe that the survivor survey, the survivor view survey was sort of the tip of the iceberg. And we do plan on doing a lot more outreach. And especially here locally in the state, how we can address some of these issues. Because, you know, while we've been working on trying to address cancer disparities for a long time, in this new normal with COVID-19, these issues are a lot different than these issues we've been working on before. And trying to find solutions may be a little different than what we've thought of as, as ways to address these pregnant issues in the past. Uh, thank you so much, Corey Chan, for joining us today, and aloha to you. Yeah, thank you. Corey Chan there is with the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network. Don't go away. Good morning, Hawaii. We'll be right back.